everybody, it's Tyler here at FLR checking in with team number 1787, the Flying Circuits. They're coming out of Ohio, and joining me, I have Nathan, Helena, and Nikki. And we're gonna be talking about this just well-made, very crisp machine that they're doing so well here so far at FLR. Uh, of course, going through that entire cargo journey up into the climber. You gotta see the great packaging they have here on this robot coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, supported by Stryker Careers. Apply the skills you gained as a first student or mentor and help change the world at Stryker. Stryker is the top career choice for many of those in first because of their commitment to innovation and saving lives. Learn more about the incredible culture at Stryker and view their thousands of positions available around the world at careers.stryker.com. Competition season is here. Head on over to thebluelines.com to catch all the events each week. Don't forget to submit your clips of the week to discord.gg forward slash first updates now. Vote in the FRC Top 25 and play in our free fantasy pick'em. Catch fun shows live on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. So Nathan, we're going to start out following that cargo journey or robot. Take us through your intake, talk about some of the iterations and what your final product came out to be. Yeah, so our intake, it started out pretty pretty different than what we ended up the final model. We were originally thinking we would use multiple sets of wheels to really bring it through its whole journey here, but in the end we were able to get it down to one. We were originally thinking this whole this whole set here would be one axle, but we knew if we accidentally got into contact with a robot that could bend this axle here down the middle. So we split it in half but left a full left a full axle here so it could all be driven with our one motor which we have down here. And we went with Mechanum wheels because we saw from YouTube that these were filtering the cargo very, very well. So we use this so we can pick it up anywhere in our pretty wide frame and it'll filter to the center here and get brought in. And at the start of the match, it's always up and we like to bring it up and down a lot to avoid contact. So we have two pneumatic powering it here so it can get dropped down. So as you're doing that, as it drops down, uh, if you're using the pneumatic and bring it up and down a lot, how do you make sure you, you got enough air pressure? How do you, do you have big accumulators on your robot? How does that work? Yeah, so we actually have our two air tanks centered right here behind the pneumatics. We, pretty much everything on our robot uses pneumatics. So we have to pressurize our air before the start of every match. The air, the air uh, compressor is pretty much running the entirety of the match to make sure that we have enough air for everything and the intake comes up and down pretty much every time we pick up a cargo unless there's one right there where we can pick one up, turn around and grab a second, and then we bring it up to go to go shoot. So I know we're gonna be going through uh, the uh, interesting names you have for each mechanism. Is it, does your intake have a specific name? Yeah, so uh, it'll, we'll get more into why in the next section, but we actually named all of our parts after the different penguins from Madagascar. So the intake is named Skipper because it's kind of the chief of the whole operation. You know, you can't score any balls without getting them into your robot first. So Helena's next gonna talk to us about your uh, indexing area, or I'm told it's called the Kowalski. Uh, so talk about that and then we'll uh, work our way into your shooter. So the Kowalski mechanism is basically how we transport balls from the intake into our shooter, where they're met by the indexer. So um, the Kowalski, just like the intake, is run by one Neo 550, and it runs along this clear Lexan rail into the shooter. So we can hold two balls in this area before they go into the shooter. So you guys have a very interesting uh, way of packaging that I've seen from other robots where you're kind of almost doing a horizontal movement of the uh, uh, cargo. Uh, when you were looking at packaging, how did you come up with this type of concept? So in general, our team likes to stick to a shorter bot. So um, a lot of it, what we did, including cutting the corner in the back, was to give us more area around our robot to in the places that we need, such as the shooter and the climber. Um, so by doing that, we had a more horizontal approach instead of having that vertical approach that a lot of other teams have. Well, let's get into your shooter next. Uh, talk to me about uh, some of the concepts we had. Now, uh, your team uh, is not doing swerve and doesn't have a turret at all, but it, you've been scoring really, really well during the matches. Uh, so talk to me about some of the strategy and concept behind that. Um, so the shooter went through the most prototypes out of any of our subsystems. I, this is our fifth, no, the final is our sixth uh, version of this design. So one of the cool things about our shooter is instead of having a hood, our entire the entire mechanism moves with pneumatics in the back. Um, the pivot point for that is our indexer. So whenever the balls come into the shooter, the indexer always meets them at the same height, which 
I feel has played a key role in our success with the consistency of our shot. One of our earlier prototypes had a hood in the back as well as only one flywheel and we had a lot of issues with the backspin. Um, watching the matches now, uh, you can see a lot of teams have cargo bouncing out of the hub when they make it. By adding this back flywheel, we've reduced the backspin, making it so it, once it's in the hub, there's not a, a lot of chance that it's going to bounce out, which I feel has been pretty key to the success of our robot. Absolutely. Uh, as we keep moving your robot, uh, I know Nikki's going to cover your uh, climber mechanism on it, and uh, very impressive looking climber so far. So Nikki, talk to me a little about uh, what's gone into your climber, and then kind of where on the priority list did it land? Was going for the type of climb you're doing, was that the most important thing? Were you looking at your robot? Well, I feel like climbing, really, we chose it to make it our center point of the bot. It took us a lot of effort to figure out where we wanted to do it, but everything around on our robot is based off of our climber location. Climbing wasn't our number one choice to do, but it is a really big part of what we do now, just because we can make it to the traversal rung, so it's a really large part of what we do. Um, we used one active uh, hook right in the middle and two passive hooks on the side. Um, our active hook goes up and then back to uh, climb the rungs and our passive hooks just uh, lock on so that our robot doesn't swing as much. Um, we have two little pieces right here on our active hook uh, that help to minimize uh, swinging. It's just these two right here that help to minimize our swinging um, so that we don't fall off the rungs. Uh, we're powered by one Neo and uh, well, pneumatic. We're powered by a pneumatic, and that helps us bring our active arm down and back up again. Can we see the climber deploy, maybe narrate a little bit what's going on? Yeah, let's just get out of the way. So that's our climber going back, and then it's going to go up, right? And then this is when it would hook onto a bar, and we would rise ourselves up, and our passive hooks would hook onto that bar. And then that whole, sequ that whole cycle would continue until we made it to the traversal. I believe we hold a button down the whole time through our climber and that and then we release it when we want to stop. Well 1787 flying circuits you've been looking fantastic here at FLR so we wish you only the best luck at this competition and of course throughout the rest of your season. Thanks a lot for taking the time. Thank you. Thank you. Making this match score zero for the blue alliance. Red Alliance will take the victory here. Thanks to Striker Careers for their support in this video. Apply the skills you gained as a first student or mentor and help change the world at Striker. Striker is a top career choice for many of those in first because of their commitment to innovation and saving lives. Learn more about the incredible culture at Striker and view their thousands of positions available around the world at careers.stryker.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.